Hey everyone, welcome to Your Virtual Coffee, the web show which introduces you to great local businesses in the Denver metro area. Today, my guest is the amazing Kyle Gravett, CEO of 3A Clean. They work with owners and managers of medical, industrial, and commercial facilities who are frustrated with the substandard quality of their facilities maintenance and the lack of communications with vendors. Kyle is an avid networker and was the first person I met at the Denver Metro Chamber, and I am very proud to call Kyle my friend. And with that, Kyle, welcome to my show. Thanks, Gina. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, I know that you are a huge baseball fan. Who's your favorite team? You know, I've rooted all my life for the Minnesota Twins, and being that they're small market, I also have a family tie uh, with my uncle and my now deceased grandmother. They were Dodger fans when they when my uncle was little because there was no twins in Minnesota at that point. They were the Washington Senators, but I also root for the Dodgers. So over the last eight years, I've had something to to root for, uh, and you know, got a, a World Series championship last year. But I love all sports. Just want to point that out. Okay, then let's let's dig into that. Who's your favorite pro football team? Uh, long-suffering Viking fan, and I'm probably going to turn off a lot of people here, but I started rooting for Tom Brady and the Patriots when they played the Super Bowl. I think it was the 2002 Super Bowl uh, against the uh, St. Louis Rams because I had a little case of the uh, the, the chapped rear end with uh, the owner of that team at that point, and I've rooted for Tom Brady ever since, and I rooted for him even in the Super Bowl, even though I have so many family and friends that are Chiefs fans, but there's just- You were rooting for Tampa Bay. I was rooting for Tampa Bay because there's just something about that man and the chip on his shoulder, and he wants to prove everybody that he can do it, and I, I, I love that drive in him, so- my favorite team is the Vikings. My probably favorite player of all time is Tom Brady. Okay, that's fair enough. All right, we got to hit college football. Do you have a favorite team for that? You know, uh, when I was young, I, I loved the USC Trojans. And it's because I grew up in Northern Illinois and on winter days, and they would show the sideline in Southern California. I just loved that. Now, were you a Marcus Allen fan? I love Marcus Allen. Love Marcus Allen. You know he, you know he deserved that Heisman Trophy. He, he's the man. And I loved Bear Bryant when I was a little kid. So you know I'm a Roll Tide guy too. <laughs> well, you'll be popular with some of my audience because I have some big SEC fans out there. Right. And you know, and 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 I rooted for Nick Saban when he was the coach at uh, at LSU. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a, I, I love Ed Orgeron, you know, who uh, he still is the coach at LSU because he was at SC and I felt like he should have had that head coaching job. And, you know, so I followed him. Uh, and when they had the chance to 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 win that national championship, I was in his corner for 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 Ed. I get that. OK, so outside of sports, which it sounds like you're really passionate about. What do you like to do for fun? More sports, golf. <laughs> now, do you go to places like Top Golf and 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 hit the ball there? You know, I go there for the social event. You know, to practice golf. That's not the place that I would go. Number one, you don't need to pay twenty five bucks an hour. You can buy a a, a, a bucket of balls for uh, five bucks for a small bucket or nine bucks for a large bucket. And you can go over to the practice range and, you know, so there's, there's a more economical way to practice. Uh, but I like top golf for the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the social socialization and the uh, networking, you know, we've been there with the chamber and it was, it was an awesome time. That was a great event. You're right. Yeah. My, you know. my issue with that, besides the fact that we could get Sam and I could get soda diet Coke whenever we wanted, which was awesome. Um, I'm left-handed. And so it's very rare that I come across women's golf clubs designed for left-handed, so left-handed people. So I just assume when I go to places like that, they're not going to have 
anything for me anyways, other than the nonstop refills of Diet Coke. <laughs> so you got that going for you. And so I have that going for me. Yeah. So as the CEO of 3A Clean, and you guys do industrial cleaning, how'd you get started in that field? Okay, this is a fluke story how I got there. So this is uh, June of 83. I drive from, I, at that point, I was living in northern Minnesota, back where I was born. My parents had moved from northern Illinois back to their hometown. And I'd, ha I'd had enough of uh, doing that thing up there. And my uncle lived in California. We drive out there get out there and we're at, uh, we're, we're on the Malibu pier and there was a little restaurant called Alice's. It's not there anymore, I don't think. But as we were done, we're out there on the pier and you could actually smoke out there and drink beer. Uh, imagine that. And there's Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell fishing with their kids. I'm sure Kate Hudson might've been one of those little kids. And as we're standing, my uncle says, so what are you planning on doing? And earlier in my life, between uh, the ages of 19 and 20, I sold insurance. So I understood making the sale and getting that commission. I said, I'm going to get a job that pays salary plus commission. He said, how long do you think that's going to take? I said, a week. I've seen what the LA Times uh, uh, want ad section looks like. It's big. And he scoffs at me, says, I'll bet you 50 bucks you can't do it. And it's like, you're on, buddy, because I left the house with $600 the week before, and I might have been down to $500 at that point after paying for gas and food and everything at the time. And I was about to lose that bet when I got the third call from this company, and this time it was the sales manager and not the, the administrative assistant. And the sales manager explained to me that I was going to sell service. And I understood unit pricing because I'd also been around the construction industry as, as, as a young, younger man. Um, so they told me what they would pay. It was, it was a draw on commission. It wasn't really a salary. It was a draw with the commission, little expense account, some, some, some money for the car and all that because I drive my own car. And I called my uncle in. We were outside washing our cars. I said, listen to this guy explained it to me and I said, when do I start? He goes, can you start Monday? I said, yeah. And when we hung up the phone, I've held out my hand and said, pay me. <laughs> and I, I, got, I, I, under, I understood what my job was. And the first day out, I sold the job, you know, and, uh, and while I was there, I was at that particular position for 18 months. I put on 144 accounts for that company in Southern California. And realized at that point, uh, you know, 18 months in that there were there were some uh, issues within the company and, and the management of the company and the ownership. And I figured that if I don't get out now, I'm, I'm going to not have a job anyway. So me and a couple of the other people that recognized the same things, we got together and we formed a company in Southern California. Uh, and I've been doing it. I've been doing it since March 1st, 1985 for me and my partners. I love that. And I thank you for sharing that story because it, it fits the, um, the, the narrative as far as why you do what you do and why you're excited to get up and do what you do. Now for that business owner out there, Kyle, what is an issue that keeps that business owner up at night and how do you address it? So I've been on um, a few panels uh, and it's mostly through the chamber and organizations like the chamber that bring groups of people together. And I, I get that question. And the first thing is that new entrepreneurs typically are worried about getting paid. Well, when we got started, we actually knew that we were going to have business. We talked. We talked to the people that were coming with us and we talked to some of the accounts that they worked in. We knew we had inside information about th them not being paid and what they were being told as to why they weren't being paid. And it wasn't because the client wasn't paying. We told the clients what we wanted to do, how we were going to handle things, and they came with us. So the day we opened the door, we had business. And 
that's one of the things that I think stops entrepreneurs. If I'm not mistaken, that's one of the biggest things is not, not this, not that, but it's the inability of the business owner to be able to pay their own bills because they're strapped all the time. And to me, in our business, we ask for as good a terms, payment terms as possible because we have a payroll to make every two weeks. And even if it's outsourced, even if we're using affiliate partners and, and temp agencies, those bills come due right away. You know, you've got to pay for it. So getting terms and that's partnering with clients. And I think that many young entrepreneurs and people that have never been in business, they don't look at it as a partnership with the client. And I think that it's very, very important to do that. And, you know, I don't sleep at night because I'm an insomniac. No, it's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not laying there worrying about stuff. I'm, I'm pretty much, I know, I know when it's time to turn that off. Even, even, when, even, even when, you know, the crap's hitting the fan, I know, I know when it's time to turn it off because you can't function. You got to turn it off so that whatever's going on upstairs here shakes out. That's why they say sleep on it. You sleep on it, you get up and you have a better perspective at that point. So I gave you a really long answer there. So, well, I think too, part of why you're such a success and why you can help those clients when they're worried about getting paid is because you're all about building relationships. It's not necessarily making that sale. Would that be an accurate depiction? Yeah. Yes. You know, I think that, you know, number one, finding out who your clients are as people. And I know that in the very beginning, that can be harder, but we have long-term clients. In our business, we've got clients that we've had for decades. We don't want to just hire, you know, be hired by you and then next year be out. In the service business, the philosophy needs to be customer, client for life. That's what you want to do. And there's a lot of things that go into that. And it is getting to know the customer, the client, the person that's in charge of us. We have great relationships with those people that manage us. And it's because we get to know them as human beings. What, what drives them? What is the thing that means the most to them with this service? And it's not always what people think, you know? And so getting to know the people as human beings is a huge key relationship wise that everybody should heed, in my opinion. Okay, Kyle, I wanna talk about power partners. And for our audience, power partners are those businesses who target your same ideal client, but are not your competition. A great example would be a personal trainer and a hairstylist because they both target that ideal client of someone who either wants to improve, wants to look better, wants to do something in their life like that. And it's a great relationship to have because you can trade referrals. And so it's something that I like to talk about on my show, but in order to talk about those power partners, Kyle, we need to get an idea of who your ideal client is. So who is 3A Clean's ideal client? Well, the ideal clients that we have are clients that, the best clients that we have are people that came from a really, really bad situation and were willing to work with us and share information with us so that we could come to an agreement on A, what they were gonna pay and what we were gonna give them for what they were willing to pay. So there's partnership involved there. And we love when we're not treated like um, a commodity, you know, when they say you're all the same. And it's like, well, yeah, maybe you can say that. I mean, we're all in the cleaning business, but it's the same thing as saying a car is a car. Well, getting to point it from point A to point B is the same thing, no matter what you drive. Now, do you want to drive a 68 Volkswagen Beetle or do you want to drive a 2021 Mercedes-Benz, whatever, SUV, you know, big difference in the mode that you're using to get to where you're going. Both get you to the same spot, but you feel different and you get there and you're different, you know, more comfort, more whatever, more amenities. 
Um, so we don't want to be treated like a commodity. It's better that we, number one, that we have that human interaction. Like I said, we get to know each other. That's, that's the best. Those are, those are our best clients. And we've got a, a pretty good roster of clients that we've had for well over 10 years, over 20 years. And um, I'm not out in LA anymore, but one of the accounts that we had from 1984, before I even had my own company, when I moved from there, I sold a piece of that company to a group that was cleaning for us. They wanted to be in their own business. They still have those accounts. So I don't know if I can still claim them, but we want companies that aren't looking to churn all the time. That's a hard, hard thing to do. And we talk to clients all the time or potential clients and say, we have to go through this process once a year because corporate mandates it. Well, I guess if they need to have you spin in your wheels, but why wouldn't you just build something that works all the time? And why would you disrupt something that's working to check the market? I mean, you checked the market. What do you think that uh, people are going to find people to work for less? So I don't know. I don't know if I answered that question, but. Yeah, I think so. One I'm hearing are a couple things. One, someone who is cleaningly neat. Mm -hmm. And then two, that same company who has cleaningly needs also has had an issue in the past mm -hmm. with poor performance or what have you. So I'm thinking for who else targets that particular client, I'm thinking places like security companies, those, those firms that supply um, security guards. Right. Because I'm so sure those go through, you know, quite a bit. They probably, you know, from time to time have turnover as you probably deal with as well. Um, I'm also thinking because you clean commercial spaces, um, those commercial real estate agents, because some do landlord representation, some do tenant. Um, and, and so those are the two that I'm thinking of. Sure. So like for us, you know, uh, the industrial accounts that we take care of, there are landscapers at every one of them. The landscapers take care of the greenery during the summer and they do the parking lots in the winter. They take care of the outside, you take care of the inside. That's correct. So you got the landscapers. That's You've a great one. And, and almost all industrial, big industrial, typically they have an in-house staff maintenance to take care of things, but they also have outside help when the project gets big enough. They'll bring in commercial elect electricians. The, most of the places have industrial elevators. Some of them ha even have, you know, the nice elevators you see in a class A building. So elevator companies, that's another one. Okay. You know, commercial plumbers is another one. And typically the people that I'm mentioning right now, they would actually deal with the person that we deal with. You know, right, the same decision maker, same decision maker. And oftentimes the, the decision maker at the level that we're at may be able to say, I need somebody else. And, you know, somebody in accounting or HR or somebody in the C-suite has ultimate authority to say yay or nay on it. But that person that's dealing with it on a day to day basis at the highest level in that organization, that's typically who we deal with. And so anybody that deals with those people are great power partners. And we've gotten some excellent, excellent leads that have turned into long-term business because of those business development people that, you know, because they're standing around the same way that I would. We're talking about more than just your electrical uh, panel that's having a problem right now. You know, we were addressing the electrical panel with the people that are there and well, that's happening. We're talking about the Nuggets game last night. We're talking about this. And all of a sudden, the cell phone rings and the manager of that company's maintenance gets a call and says, hangs up and he says, my janitorial company is terrible. And the little light bulb goes off and hence we're there. Exactly. So to that business owner, the, the owner of the commercial property, who's watching this show, sees this and says, you know what, 
I like that Kyle guy. He treats me like I'm a human. What's the best way for him or her to reach out to you? The best way to reach out is if you go to our website, 3aclean.com. And then I, and this is probably not the best way because for whatever reason, we've got a form there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But there's a phone number there, 303-716-2802. If you call there, we have an answering service. They'll patch you through no matter where we are. They'll find us. And we'll include inf this information at the end of the video. Okay. Along with who your ideal client is and who your power partners are. Kyle, any last thoughts for the audience? You know, we would love to talk with you if you've got needs. And we have certain, you know, at this point in, in, in my career, we're big enough and we can't handle certain smaller jobs at an economical level at times, especially if they've got budgets. Um, so we have, we have pretty high minimums for one, two and three day a week jobs where we come more in line with, you know, what's, what's acceptable are the five, six, seven day a week jobs. And we excel at uh, 24, seven, 365 projects. We have people that'll do those. So and once again, you know, I start to roll, Gina, and I lose myself. I don't even know if I answered your question properly. You did. Basically, audience, if you have a commercial space that needs to be clean, call Kyle. You got it. Is that good? Perfect. Kyle, thank you so much for coming on my show today. I appreciate it so much. Gina, thanks for having me. I always enjoy your company. And I, I, I remember that first time that we met. And if I'm not mistaken, we met at the little bar through the chamber that was right next to the Performing Arts Center. Yes. And we and sat out and, yes, I remember. And not the place where I accidentally knocked the drink out of your hand. That was a different <laughs> event. <laughs> Audience, thank you so much for joining us in your virtual coffee today. We could not do this show without you. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. At your virtual, virtual coffee, we love business professionals. So business people, let's talk. Thanks and have a great day. Your Virtual Coffee is sponsored by Ventola Law. Ventola Law, mediation and legal representation at an expert level. You can find them at VentolaLaw.com. Thanks for joining me today. For more information on your virtual coffee, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wait for it, our website at yourvirtualcoffee.com. Thanks again for watching and have an incredible day.